In this video, we're going to take a look at the options that you can use with the draggable widget. And the first one we're going to look at is the grid option. And this creates sort of an invisible grid in the background. You can't actually see it, but you'll notice it when I start dragging around the images. Now, you pass in two parameters here, a first value and a second value. And this equates to the height, and it's in pixels, by the way, and this equates to the width. So let's go ahead and launch our browser and let's see what we get. So if I drag these around, see how these are dragging around like they're on a grid? You see that? And basically this allows your user to easily line up the elements. So take a look, it's much easier to sort of line these up. See that? They just kind of snap into place. So that's one thing that's nice about the grid. Okay, so let's take a look at another option. And actually, let's open up the browser again. I wanted to show you something really quickly. You'll notice that I can drag these off of the main element. It doesn't prevent me. But you can prevent that by using the containment option. So let's go take a look at that now. So all you do is write in containment right here. And then there's a couple values, but the only one I ever really use is parent. And actually we put that in quotes. And basically what this does is it won't allow the user to drag the elements outside of its parent element. And in this case, the main is the parent element. So we shouldn't be able to drag it outside of that space. So let's save this and let's see what we get. And take a look at that. I can't drag this now outside the parent element. It won't let me. Oh, that's strange. It allows me to take it off the top. That's strange. That might be a bug. I'll have to take a look at that. Well, at least it's stopping me from pulling it across the sides, but apparently I can take it over the top. That's interesting. But anyways, you can see how that works. Now you can also use the cursor option. And that basically will change the cursor to whatever cursor you want to use when the user drags the element. In this case, of course, it's an image. So let's just change this to crosshair. You can use different, I think there's a move, you can go take a look at the jQuery UI library and see all the different cursors they provide. But let's just use crosshair and let's see what we get. So take a look at that. When I drag the image, I now get a crosshair for the cursor. So that's how that works. Now you can also set a delay. And what that'll do is it'll basically delay the user from dragging the element. And let's just set this to 350 milliseconds. You can play around with different settings. So let's see what we get. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drag it now. See how there was a delay? See that? Another delay. So that's basically what that option does. Now the final one I'm gonna show you is the revert option. And basically that will send the element back to where it came from. And you'll see how that works in a second. So let's go ahead and drag this third image and see it goes back to its original position. That's actually kind of cool. So that's how that works. And actually there's one more property I wanna show you and that is the axis property. And basically what you can do here is only allow the user to drag it on a particular axis. And the two values are X and Y. Those are the two values. So let's go ahead and set this to Y. Basically what this will do is only allow the user to drag the element on a vertical path. So that's what Y is for and X is for horizontal if you wanted to restrict it only to horizontal dragging. So let's go ahead and run this and let's see what we get. And there, I can only drag this up and down now on the Y axis. I can't move it side to side. So if you wanna go ahead and flip that to X, go ahead and try that. But in any event, we're done with this video. Thank you very much.